if we were to figure out backwards time travel, would would that be the same as forwards time travel, or is that technologically well, different? Or is it is it more difficult? Or do you know anything about this? Yeah, yeah. Forward time travel is easy. That that's happening all the time. Uh, you have what Mark and Scott Kelly went into space. Mark was already the older brother, um, but I think Scott Kelly was the one. The two astronaut twins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott Kelly was the one, I think, that was in space for like just over a year. Right. And so Mark Kelly, as the older brother, uh, aged another like five milliseconds compared to his younger brother, Scott, because of time dilation, because of slowing down time. Yeah. So that's time travel into the future. Essentially, Mark Kelly time traveled right. into the future of his twin brother, Scott. Um. But yeah, time dilation, the twin paradox, that's that's future time travel. All you have to do to travel into the future is go really fast relative to the speed of light. Um, the physics of backward time travel and the philosophy of it and how we understand it is different. It comes with a different set of conundrums. But um, I, I cited a paper by Ehrman et al., two separate papers, in I think the extra tempestual model, where they looked at every criticism of backward time travel they could find in the literature, this mm. massive literature review. Yeah. And the the title of the paper was, uh, is, back, is time travel to the past prohibited? And they said their conclusion was, no, there's nothing in the laws of physics that would prevent backward time travel. And if that's the case, given human ingenuity and our ability to solve so many different problems, our ability to advance technology, if there's nothing that prohibits backward time travel, I think it's only a matter of time until we do it. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. We don't know how to do it now. We don't even know what time is. Speaking of like this physical reality versus some conscious reality that may exist outside of it, and these two may be related, we don't know what time is. We know it's emergent. It's called an emergent phenomenon. Mm. That means it comes from something more fundamental that we haven't yet discovered. It's one of few things that physicists will actually agree on. So until we know what that fundamental thing is, we can't know what time is because we can't see the whole picture. There's a big part of this puzzle that's missing. Yeah, There's a huge part of the, the picture that's just pixelated and, and outside of our ability to focus on it. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. You know, and if it's not impossible, then we're going to figure it out eventually. And I think we already have. And I think what we're seeing in the form of these craft and the beings that pilot them is is exactly that. It's it's um, an indication that we do figure it out in the future and use it to go back to whatever point in the past they can reach. Has anyone ever talked to you or reached out to you that could corroborate the fact that the government has these crafts and they are in fact time machines that they're trying to figure out how to work whether they be depending on how credible they are maybe they're credible maybe they're not has anyone ever claimed it yeah uh quite a few people actually really yeah um i, I i'm not gonna you know pick and choose because i don't know whose names i could use and whose i couldn't but yeah, some, we don't we don't have to say their names yeah some some are people other people would know mm -hmm. um but yeah, it, it's been mentioned to me many times. Interesting. Yeah, because you might like if if we had the technology and we were able to go back into the past, like you would have to be very careful, and there would have to be. I would imagine you'd have to put regulations in place. Yeah, for sure. To and rules on a who could go. And B, like, what are the rules? How much are you allowed to interact? Yeah, Non-interference. Yeah. Right. And, you know, honestly, I think that bolsters the case for this theory. Because an argument could be made if these extraterrestrials are traveling, you know, light years to get here, millions of miles, why wouldn't they introduce themselves upon arrival or kill us and take all of our stuff or yes. enslave us, you know? Yes. Um, but right, exactly. if they are coming from the future, you don't want a, a back to the future two scenario where Biff gets rich off of sports betting and just starts an empire, you know, um, or, or maybe you would. You, <laughs> right. Yeah. I you'd imagine I, sports betters would yeah, be making a killing yeah, off of it. Yeah. No, that, yeah. Or which, like how you 
talk about is the um the tourist idea of like yeah get, time like, tourists like let's sure. get fucked up and go check out these crazy yeah. apes you know in las vegas yeah you know? absolutely i mean or to go back and you know see jesus crucifixion or how they built the pyramids and all these different landmarks and, and i mentioned too in that same section of the book that the most visited sites are these ancient historic and prehistoric sites. That's where tourists want to go. So we go there and we imagine what it would look like. If you could actually go to the time that was like the period that they were making these things, you could see how they lived and interacted with each other and um, understand there were poets and, and writers at the time of Jesus and, and see what, what people are doing in their day-to-day -day lives, you'd pay a ton of money for that opportunity. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. outside of us inventing backward time travel to mitigate the the twin paradox effect where you want to go home not just to your planet but to your time to see when your family's still alive right you would probably uh also invent it there would be a motivation to invent it to fill that demand side economic yes. aspect of going back in time one other thing related to this just this conversation just made me think of it is another line of evidence too is based on what we would do in a longitudinal study of an individual is very similar to what those individuals who are lifelong abductees describe in these cases where they're picked up as a small child throughout their teens, 20s, 30s, whenever. As an aged adult, they know these people. They've been interacting with them their entire life, but case after case, they say they don't age. And that's exactly right. what you expect if they're using time travel in order to do that. You could do a whole longitudinal study on that one individual that for them, the, the abductee would be a lifetime, but for the researchers, researchers might be one or two days. Yeah. Um, they Whitley's, just pop in and out and get them when they want. Whitley said the being that he asked that he thought was a female, he asked how old she was. And she said ancient was yeah. her answer. She's probably right. Ancient and wise, I would add that to him. Another pattern that emerged from this book is oftentimes with these lifelong abductees, they're the opposite gender of the person that's taken. Yeah, that's so like... I don't know why. It's just a, a pattern that emerged in case after case. Willie had sex with his too. I know. It's a pretty wild, wild account. And, um, the and so book did David he, Huggins. Yeah. That's another thing. Like they're so advanced, why can't they just reproduce or like like figure out how to crossbreed us with them in a better way than like primitive fucking. <laughs> I mean, have you ever had sex? It's super fun. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, yeah, no, the, I guess, the right? The primitive fucking's even more fun yeah. too sometimes. It depends right. on your mood and, you know, if, yeah, you've if you're some, some billion, if you're some, but. you know, if you're some billionaire living in, you know, a million years from now, like would you want to go back and and have sex with a, a primitive ape? Or a primitive human? Yes. I don't know. Yes, you would. Yeah. Actually, so... <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to go back and fuck an Australia Pithecus. I, I, I think, well, I'm, I'm a horny guy, so maybe... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got to put that out there. But You're sick fuck, Mike a, Masters. A part of my sick fuckedness uh, needs to be acknowledged right now, because this, this book, we've touched on a number of interesting... Um, aspects of the storyline mm -hmm. but the main character it's a female protagonist in this book the main character is an inner temporal sex researcher mm. that's her job she goes back which book in are we time. talking about this one this one right here okay revelation yeah, revelation the future human past she is an anthropologist from the future wow. whose job is to go back and fuck everybody from these different times to l learn about sex because they don't have sex in the future i sort of took that atrophy genitals thing uh. and ran with it they stopped having sex. Her job is to go back and study it in order to learn about it so she can teach people of the future about the, the primitive fucking, as you said. Oh, it's, a very, it's a very important theme. Actually, a buddy of mine, he's a, he, he, as soon as this came out, he was like, sex, drugs, and UFOs, baby. Because that, that's what this book is. It's like um, sort of an exploration of basic human drives and instincts in the context of war, violence, religion, but also very much sex. It's a, it's a wild ride. Wow, man. Well, we just did a little bit over three hours. Seriously? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I had no idea. That was fun. Yeah, that was great. Huh. Um, what is in your future as far as work, books? Is there anything else new you're looking at that you're going to talk about soon or... Um, yeah, I've kind of had to pull back a little bit. Um, not quitting, in case anybody's listening. 
Uh, that's what got me in trouble in Phoenix. Yeah. Um, don't fucking tell them to portal through me. I don't, wanna, I don't <laughs> want none of that. <laughs>